the chat and let us know where you're you're tuning in from. Cole and I are in sunny Arizona. Not to rub it in yeah. or anything, but it is 80 <laughs> degrees and beautiful. <laughs> and I, I, I'm in a very gray, gray Denmark, so <laughs> a bit different here. <laughs> uh, so guys, we have um, around 200 uh, signups, so let's give a couple of minutes for everybody to join. Ontario. Ooh, I bet it's cold up there. <laughs> Where is everyone joining from? Pop in the chat, let us know. Also, um, would love to know ahead of time if there is any specific reason you joined today, if there's something you really wanted to learn, pop in and let us know what that is. We can still see people joining, so yeah. we're gonna give it a couple of minutes before we start. From Spain. Spain. Amazing. Hi, Alan. Glad that you can join. Wisconsin. Hello. Beautiful in Ontario. Sunny and warm. Lots of <laughs> snow on the ground. That's like, I think, the perfect winter weather, right? It's beautiful. It's sunny. You can enjoy the snow, maybe go skiing or snowboarding. You're not freezing your butt off. <laughs> New York. New York. Oh, nothing is better than New York. I've been once and it was only Seriously? for literally one day. <laughs> so Seriously? I just did it for like a vacation. Yeah, I went for one day. Here, so it was like a it was like a quick stop that I had one day to spend there. So have you never been to Greater New York, the dental show? No. Mm -mm. Jesse no. And, and Rob usually go. Seven inches in Colorado. Nice. Nice. <laughs> I've never been to Colorado, although that's on my bucket list. It's beautiful there. I have, I imagine, I think, have I been to more places in the U.S. than you have, Okay, Michelle? but that's like every European. You guys go everywhere. <laughs> People in the United States, like, we don't go places. <laughs> Especially not with COVID. Ugh. No, we don't go. Like, we're still in lockdown in Denmark uh, until <laughs> April 6th. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I, uh, I haven't done very much traveling with COVID, but... As a family, we've spent a lot of time just outdoors and finding things to do in our state, um, which has been fun. You have to get creative. Guys, uh, uh, as I mentioned, um, if there's anything like very specific that you're looking to take away from the webinar or maybe you have a specific question, please pop into the chat and let us know what that is. Um, we want to make sure that this is interactive and then you can walk away feeling like you learned a lot. So we're, we're really excited to share this webinar with you. Belgium. Hello. I like Belgian waffles. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't? <laughs> awesome, guys. We're, we're going to give people one more minute before we get started. We had a lot of registrants, and so we just want to give people time to hop on. Yeah, and I think and also in Europe, it's uh, end of uh, business hours, so people are probably just uh, tuning in, so. Trying to get their kids some snacks <laughs> so they can focus for a little bit. Yeah. yeah Louisiana, the we weather. Hey, Kim. As we go through the webinar, um, please feel free towards, you know, as we walk through to jot down any questions you have, and because we'll be doing a a Q and A towards the end. So if you have any questions, we'll be happy to help you with that. Good point. And if you are sitting and you're thinking, okay, I have a very specific question, but I would like to ask it in French or German or Spanish, feel free to write that. We have our amazing support on board here as well. They can speak French, German, and uh, Spanish as well. All right, let's just go ahead and get started. Let's jump in. Shark, you want to kick it off? Yes, of course. Hi, guys. Uh, welcome uh, to this webinar. We are very excited about to host this webinar for Splints, um, me and the team. Uh, just to go in and introduce myself, my name is Tariq, and I'm the business development manager for the European market for design services. So if you have any question regarding um, 
outsourcing your design to full contour by tree shape, please um, um, contact me and I will be um, one that can help you together with our amazing European support. Um, uh, just a bit fast about my, myself. Um, I've been with tree shape for six years in diff different roles, such as the Global Academy, uh, uh, as a Global Training Application uh, Specialist, and as a TRIAS Excellence Specialist, where I was responsible on focusing on how to do the sales training for our reseller. And in 2019, I joined the design service team where I'm heading the European team for business development. So that was about me. Awesome, I'll go ahead and um introduce myself. My name is Cole. I've been with Full Contour now for about two years. I've been a technician for a little over 13 years now. So I started off as a wax metal substructure. And then over the past probably about seven years, my main focus has been inside of uh, digital design, inside of Reshape. So I'm, I'm happy to be a part of this team and we're, we're excited to share this Flint offering with you guys today. Awesome. My name is Michelle Shippey. I do customer development for Full Contour. Um, I've been with Full, for Full Contour for about six years now. Um, my role is to really help labs and manufacturers get onboarded with design services, um, creating custom workflows, getting our API connected, and really ensuring the whole process goes really smoothly. Um, I oversee the orthodontic department, so Splints and Night Guards is under my umbrella, so I'm here today to help support this. And then also any um, US customers, if you guys have questions about splints or workflow onboarding questions, um, absolutely reach out to me after the webinar. So excited for you guys to join us today. And Cole, why don't you go ahead and kick us off? All right, sounds good. So for some of you that may not be fully aware of us, um, as Full Contour, all we do is design. So we take anything from single unit crowns all the way up to full arch hybrids and pretty much everything in between. So anything that, that can be done in 3Shape, we offer as a digital design service. So we're here for you to help. Um, this here is our, our full Contour Phoenix team where our headquarters are and our corporate offices. So we have uh, specialists under each indication that can support you guys for any of your needs under any of our design indications that we offer. Um, one of the things that we've done over the years is we've come up with design guides for each of our indications to just to help, you know, you understand and and communicate the details on whatever the type of case that you are you're sending. So I'm just going to kind of give you a brief review of some of those offerings that we have. So we have our lucid design guide, our denture guide, our standard crown and bridge design guide, uh, smile design are all on X. And then also today, what we'll be going over, of course, is our split and night guard design. So as you can see, um, we've made this process very simple for you guys in order to communicate the details. Uh, each one of these indications will have the, the process inside of our platform for you to choose from various different design guides. So that's been a, a great thing that we've implemented into our platform in order to, to help you guys achieve what you're looking to, to get out of this. I'm going to get into the split and night guard design guide, some of the uh, order requirements that we that we require you guys before you send a case. So the first thing it's important for, for you to send the case as a complete three shape order using Splint Studio. Um, that, or you can also send an upper or lower STL with a byte reference. And then you can have that byte either in occlusion or open to your desired value. So Let's say you, you send a case and it's in occlusion. If you just give us a value of how far you want that open, that's gonna give us the best indication of how thick you want that occlusal surface. If you do send just STLs, again, it's important that those come in occlusion. We don't have the ability to take, you know, an upper and lower and digitally occlude those. So just something to keep in mind. And also when you do send just an STL, for both upper and lower outside of three shape. Um, it's important to uh, select the order creation option that you'll see when I kind of walk through some of those details on the, on the platform. Um, also material settings based on your manufacturing process. So it's really important to know and understand your retention and um, splint thickness and offset values. Uh, we, we offer a wide variety of values to choose from on our guide. 
So as long as you know and understand those material settings as far as fit goes, that's you're going to get the best outcome for that. I'm going to kind of walk through um, a couple different options here as far as how materials work inside of Splint Studio. So see, so as you can see here, these are some of the the um, Splint Studio approved manufacturers that are inside of Splint Studio. So each one of these uh, printers or manufacturing processes inside of Splint Studio will give you some values as far as you know the defaults that are set based on that manufacturer. So that'll give you a, a, a good starting point for your offsets, your retention, things like that. Of course, this can vary um, depending on where you're located, um, actually even depending on the weather as well. And let's say you have you know, two of the same printer in your office, sometimes those settings can slightly vary. So it does take some time to dial those in, but this will at least give you a good you know, reference point to start off on. And if for some reason you're you're unsure and you're and there there's a, a system that's not inside of Splint Studio, you can always reach out to that particular manufacturer and they should be able to offer you uh, the values that are recommended to start off with that. Um, we do also work with some third party manufacturers. So in that case, again, it would be best to reach out to them to get their fit settings. That way, when you drop a case on the platform, it makes it very easy for you to select those values in the design guide to achieve a, a solid fit for that. I'm going to kind of walk through a couple different um, split designs just so you guys can get an idea of, of some of the things we offer. Um, as you can see, I have these two cases here, case one and case two. This is these splints were done on the exact same model, just with some different uh, variations of how the codes were selected from the platform. So as you can see on this first one here, we have you know the border brought all the way down to the tissue area, and then on the occlusal surface, you can see you know just some changes between between the two here based on what codes were selected. We have a little bit of anterior guidance here on both sides, and then we also offer various um, code options as far as how how much depth you want to um, be put into that occlusal surface. So I also have a, a quick video here I wanted to share. Um, yeah, as I said before, you can see how that border has been brought in all the way down to the gingiva area based on that code. And then the occlusal surface, we have the options here for anterior guidance. And then also you can see the different options for impression depth and then the lingual border as well. So we have some various you know, items you can choose for that just a quick view of how that looks with the antagonist on there. And then I'm gonna get into case two. Again, this is the exact same scan, just different code options selected. So you can see how that border was placed about halfway down the, the teeth, all the way along the buckle side. This is a typical flat plane night guard with very light impressions, as you can see on the occlusal surface. And then, the border you see here is basically our default border that follows along the, the lingual side of that. So I also wanted to show you an example of how these two cases, how the code variations were chosen on this. So when I get it a little bit more into detail on the guides, I'll talk a little more on offset and retention, but you can see each one of these has, you know, various codes chosen as far as how that border placement was, and as far as how deep the impression points were placed on that. So we have, again, various different options to choose from for that. Um, case two is just a simple flat plane night guard. You can see that we have just a basic SI1 where it's very minimal contact on the occlusal surface. And then again, our, our border here that was placed on the lingual side. So this just gives you kind of a brief overview of the codes that were selected on, on each one of those cases that we have available for you guys. I kind of wanted to walk through the process on, on how to get started, how to drop a case on the platform and some of the options we have as far as codes. So after you submit a case or after you create a case, I should say in 3Shape, um, it's important that you just export that file and then from there, we'll have that complete three shape order that has all the information needed. So what you're going to want to do is just drag and drop that onto our platform. 
And then you'll see up here in the top left or the top right where the, you have your design type selections. So one of the things I kind of wanted to touch on with this is we have various different design types that have codes built in. So for crowns, for example, you see all the different codes that are that are you know geared towards just crowns. And then if we get into models, for example, you go to your guide and you have all of your codes available for models. Um, we built this in a way to make it easy so you don't have to scroll through every single code that we have. So we've built it out to where each indication will have the option to pull up just the codes that are related to that design type. There are four different uh, options for night guard and splints. We do have an order creation option, which I kind of touched on previously, if you're just going to be sending an STL. So we have that for both splint and night guard, the order creation, which is going to be an additional charge just for us to process and create that order. So I'm going to get into the guide on splints. So first we have our splint type. So we have all these different options here, flat plane, anterior contacts, uh, canine guidance, anterior ramp, cuspid guidance, cuspid rise. And of course, if you guys see something, if, if there's something that's not on here that you want us to add, we can always add those codes as well. And we get into our border options. So we have various different uh, ways to communicate where you want that border placed on the, on the scans. Um, this is something that we've been also building over time. So again, if there's something that you, do, you don't see on here that you're looking to achieve, you can always add that in. I've kind of highlighted the defaults here. So if you're unsure, you can basically just go with the simple defaults and, and we can take it from there. Um, from there, we get into our split and night guard impression. So we have these four different uh, options here, depending on how much depth you want on that occlusal surface. Again, this uh, SI1 is gonna be the default with minimal contact. And then it's really important also to um, know and understand, like I said before, your offset and retention value, because that's gonna be what affects your fit mostly. So I really recommend you guys taking the time to understanding that. And we have some awesome options available for you to, to understand that if you're unsure. Then we get into split and night guard thickness. Our, our default is basically two millimeters. So if there's something you know outside of that, you'll just choose that from, from the options that we have available in here. So once your codes are selected, you simply can come over here. And if you have a name that you wanna enter in, you can simply do that. Any kind of in additional instructions that fall outside of what we have in our guide, you can enter those into the instructions. Uh, these are a 24 hour turnaround time. And of course, you can always require design approval on this as well. That way, it'll give you a chance to kind of review the case after it's done. So then you simply just submit the case, and then it's ready to go within 24 hours. Um, after it's sent, you can see that it shows up and sent for design. And if you wanted to kind of review some of the options that you've selected, you can open that case up on the platform, and you can see, you know, follow whatever instructions that were placed on there or the name. Um, again, 24 hour turnaround time, splint type, the, the design type that was chosen was for splints. And then this is an awesome, another great thing where you can see which codes were selected for this case, just so you, you have another reference to, to refer to if you have any other you know, further questions on that. Um, another thing I kind of wanted to get into a little more detail on again was, is the offset and retention values. So again, if you're if you're unsure about that and it's something that that you're just not quite you know ready to to know which values to choose and you don't want to spend a lot of time you know redesigning cases to find that value, we do offer a um, an STL model and um, splint that's just basically pre-designed as a demo. So we can always send you those that model and the splint and and we have various different offset. Uh, values that you can test that with until you dial that in. Because again, sometimes even if you have two of the same printer, those two printers can have a slight, slight difference between the two as far as how those um, fit settings are achieved. So we do have that available for you to choose from if that's something you want to go with. Um, we also do have quite a bit of information on um, various different printers and manufacturing processes that you can reach out to customer support and they can send you some default values to at least start with. So, you know, you know, something to kind of um, get, get started on and, and work on dialing in 
things from there. Another thing I kind of wanted to mention is if if there's any any time where you have, let's say, like a, an internal material that you're wanting to select for, for splints or night guards, when you create the three shape order, if you choose your internal uh, material for that, oftentimes when we receive that case, since that order was created inside a dental system, those values, those values from that, that material will not travel to Splint Studio. So as long as um, as long as you just select a, a simple, you know, standard defaulted material that's that's inside of Three Shape, and just provide us with the values when you drop the case on the platform, that'll give you the ability to once the case is is complete, you can bring that back into your system and review it, and you know it'll it'll just clear up any kind of confusion as far as that goes. I kind of want to also walk you guys through our basic case review. So after the case comes back to you, um, it'll show up in ready for download. So you'll just scroll down to this area here. And then from there, you can click on that case on this uh, blue order ID number here. Inside of this, we're going to have various different quality control images that will come with each case to give you a good understanding of you know, everything that was done on the case based on the codes that were selected. So we have all these options here where you can scroll through or you can also you know, view them all in, in one spot, just like this. Um, from there, if you, have, if you wanna go ahead and, and process the case, you can simply just download the files, mark complete, or if for any reason you have uh, a redesign, you simply just hit that redesign and you can type in the information there as far as what needs to be redesigned and that'll go back to the team automatically and they can take it from there. Um, you can also just grab the cases from the STL files here. If there's, you know, if you want to just take it direct to, to your printer or send it to your manufacturer, you have that option available as well. So we do have uh, great customer support in various different languages. So we can support you guys in English, Spanish, German, and French. And we have our hours down here. I'm going to let kind of Michelle kind of take over and, and discuss some, some more details on this part. Yeah, so if you guys are, are interested in splint design, and there's kind of a process that you have to go through when you're trying to launch a splint offering, primarily fit is the number one issue that people struggle with because various um, printers and materials, and even as Cole mentioned, weather, right, all, all affect the fit of the splint. So as Cole mentioned, we do have um, a sample set that we can provide to you that has various offsets. Um, and retention settings so that you can take all of those. It's the same model, but with just different um, preferences. And you can go print all those and see which ones fit best and then set those as your, your default settings. Um, so we can provide that to you. We'd also love to give you one free splint design. So what I'm gonna do is in the chat, I'm actually gonna um, post a, a link there. So if you just go and submit your info, um, we'll make sure to add a free splint design to your account so you guys can at least try it out and see how it works. And then also feel free to reach out and ask for um, that sample set of, of splint design so you can test your fit. Um, we do wanna go ahead and open it up for, for questions. I know that I have some questions that are commonly asked that I'd like to ask Cole so that you guys can kind of hear how we handle those types of things. So um, Cole, can more than one code be selected for the functioning aspect of a splint? Yes, absolutely. So if you have, um, if you submit a case for splints and you, you're wanting, you know, a, a few different items on that, we do give you the option to select more than one code on that. So if you wanted anterior guidance along with anterior contact, we have that available. Or depending on, you know, the different codes we have available, you can choose any of those, those uh, variety of codes. And also, Another thing I wanted to touch on with this is since Splint Studio is um, somewhat of a, a new thing that, that we've been offering lately, we see a lot of different customers with various styles of how they like their splints. So we also welcome you guys to you know, reach out to us and let us know, hey, we love the offering. However, we want our splint designed this way or we want to, you know, implement this into it, we can always add and, and build on that. I, I would say since we've started, we've probably added 
at least five or six functioning aspects of, of the code variations. So we're continuing to build that. So I encourage you guys to reach out and let us know if there's uh, an additional code you want us to add and we'd be happy to do that. Yeah, and uh, on the topic of codes, um, in your guys' preferences on the full counter platform, we can preset your defaults. So if for night guards, you always use the same exact settings, um, we can default those in. So whenever you go to submit a case, you don't have to sit there and select the codes every single time. It'll just default to those. I know splints is a little bit more difficult because you're going to get varying orders. So you could certainly set up your, your like retention and offset defaults for your printer, mm -hmm. but then you're going to have to select how you want that design. So um, one, we can create custom codes if there's not a code that, that you see. And two, you can set your defaults. So you don't have to select those every time. Um, and then in regards to the bite, because I know we see this a lot, um, do we have to open to uh, the vertical to the desired thickness of the splint or, or how does that work when they're getting ready to submit a case for, for design? So we, we do have a couple options for this. Um, it is, as I was, as I mentioned previously, it is important that we receive those STLs in occlusion. And then from there, you can either specify how much you want us to open that bite in order to achieve the overall, you know, occlusal thickness. Or we also have customers that open the bite prior to sitting the case. And then that way, when the designer receives it, they see that that's open and they know exactly to build up that occlusal surface to however, however far that value was open. So um, can, do we design both upper and lower at the same time or do they have to submit those as different orders? How does that work? So as far as an upper and lower, uh, currently we only have the ability to design either or, so upper or lower at one time. So if you wanted to do like an upper and lower, you would have to um, submit the first one for let's say an upper, have that design, and then you would need to basically either copy to pin or scan that again with the, with the appliance on top of that and then send it over, open the byte to however far you want that desired value or give us that value and then we can make the lower to um, accommodate to that, that antagonist that was already designed. Okay, awesome. Um, in regards to pricing, I know somebody had asked for the, the cost. Um, so it ranges depending on volume and also what software you use. So Cole had already mentioned that we charge an order setup fee if you don't have a three shape um, because we use Splint Studio. If you set up the three shape order, it makes our job much easier and faster. And so we're able to offer a lower price. So I did put the link and, and I'll go ahead and post it again for you guys, but you can just go to this link. We'll give you a free splint design so you can try it out. And then we can also go over costs with you guys. Um, and then somebody also asked, how do you download a, the splint once they like it? So it's, it's very simple. There's a couple different ways on the platform. Uh, we do have an area where we offer you just the STL. So once you, you basically just highlight that STL and then on the top right, there's a, a little download icon that'll direct download to your system. And then you can drop that, that STL file either into your nesting software or your printer software and, and take it from there. Um, you can also download the complete three shape order and that'll give you the ability to actually import that back into your system. And you can you know have pretty much all the function of whether, like, like you just barely designed it. So it gives you the ability to open the design, review the case, 3D preview, or generate CAM from there. Yeah, and you can even, um, and Cole, sorry if I, I missed this part, but you can generate a, a link to send to the doctor um, so that they can even review and approve the design using that URL from the Full Contour platform. Um, right. and, and that's even branded with your lab logo. So it looks like it's coming from you. Um, so that's a really cool feature if, if you've got maybe a complex case or, or a doctor who wants to make sure the design is good before you manufacture it. Um, so Michael asked, um, he's using a Sprint Ray Pro and is curious if, what people are using for splint material or if you have any recommendations. Um, as far as material goes, I can't say for sure what what most customers are using, but uh, I would say the best bet would be to reach out to Sprint Ray and ask them what material they, they feel is best suited for, for splints. And then from there, they could also more than likely offer you the, 
the fit values as well as a, a starting point. And then of course, if you know you want to go in either direction as far as how tight or loose that fit is, you can we can adjust that. And then once we find that that spot, once we find that you know dialed in spot, we can always set that as your default. Um, since we're on the topic of fit, Mike had asked, um, can you explain the difference in retention versus offset? He said, just so I understand, a larger number in retention means tighter and a larger number in offset is looser. Is that correct? So the way retention and offset works, I would say the most important factor as far as fit is going to be re related to offset. So that larger value is going to give you a more loose fit, whereas a smaller value will get, give you a tight fit. Um, retention inside of, of Splint Studio is really the value that's related to how, you know, how retentive those undercuts are going to be. However, those values, I, I feel as though not a lot of customers are adjusting those as for fit. The main thing they're focusing on is offset. So the, the software does a pretty good, a pretty good job with understanding, you know, how that retention is going to be based on the path of insertion. Whereas offset is going to give you that you know, overall thickness between the actual splint and the scan for that retentive fit and the, the gap between the two, basically. Yeah, and again, Mike, we're, we're happy to share with you that set of um, designs that it shares the same model, but just with several different offsets so that you can test on your printer and see what fits best. Um, Hope had asked, uh, will you be going over how to print? Um, so not necessarily, no. I mean, as far as, as far as how to print, how to post process, um, typically if you reach out to your, your printer manufacturer, they can walk you through that process. I know, um, several of the, the printers that people are using, they have, you know, an online, um, option where you can get on there and they'll actually break it down for you, how to print, how to process how to nest it, it's, it's important depending on the printer, whether you place that STL file vertically or horizontally, that can always affect the fit. And then post-processing is a very important thing depending on how, you know, you process the, the, um, the baths during the, the cleaning process. So any, any printer manufacturer should have that information as far as how to, how to handle that for post-processing. Yeah, your, your printing companies can be a really great resource to you guys. They'll, they'll provide you with a lot of the standard defaults for their printer, and then you can customize from there. Um, Mary had asked, where do I find a list of the offset values? So Mary, if you were to take any type of zip and drag and drop it onto the platform and select Night Guard or select Splint, and then click on the design guide, you'll be able to see all of the preferences in there. But Cole, is there any other way she can find this information? Um, that, that's going to be your best bet. And then also once you drop that on there, you'll see the defaults that we have selected there, which, um, I would say, you know, for the most part, those defaults will work. Um, of course, with a variation of plus or minus a little bit on either side to dial it in. But if you're looking to, you know, test it out and try to get a good starting point, the defaults that we have on there have been pretty successful. If, if you're, you know, if you haven't had a chance to reach out to your printer manufacturer. And then also, um, as I mentioned before, if, if you're unsure and you can't find those settings inside of Splint Studio for defaults, please don't hesitate to reach out to us and we can, we can get you a list of, of a starting point for that. Yeah, and if you guys are on the platform um, and you're trying to figure it out, we have live chat right in the bottom, I think it's the bottom left corner. So you could always pop into chat and say, hey, help me, I'm trying to find something, right? And, and we can help you. Um, we've got a couple of more questions in the Q&A section. So somebody asked, um, is the bite opened with a translation maintaining the current angle or is the opening done in a way that mimics an articulator with an axis of rotation at the approximation of the TMJ? That is so way over bite, my head. <laughs> bite is open use by using the articulator. So the software inside of Splint Studio, you enter a value and it'll open basically the same way as how that occlusal plane is set and how that um, the, the arches land inside of the, uh, the articulator. So it's open accurately to how a patient's bite would be open. 
And then Vincent um, asked, will you print the guards if I send the digital models? And Vincent, um, Full Contour is just a design center. So all we do is the digital design. Um, so we don't do any manufacturing. However, if you need a manufacturer, we have so many integrated manufacturing partners where we can do the design and then forward that design onto one of our integrated manufacturing partners who can produce it and ship it to you. So um, don't hesitate to reach out and we can give you some recommendations. Anybody else got any questions? This webinar will be recorded. So um, we'll, we'll get it posted for you guys. I know that there's other people in your labs who weren't able to join live and you'll wanna share that with them. Um, Kim asked, do I understand it right that it is possible to implement a small logo on the splint? Um, so no, the, um, the logo is for the doctor approval uh, URL. So on any case, um, when you click review, you can click on um, generate a doctor link. And when you generate the URL and you email it to the doctor and they click on it and open it, it has your lab logo in the top left corner. So that's what I meant by the logo. It can't actually be on the splint. Uh, sorry, and also using that URL, the doctor can approve it, which then means you would get notified that the splint is ready for manufacturing, or it would then forward on to the third party manufacturer. Is it possible to take the value from any FACEBO registrations in count? Um, you know what... Do you mean like scan that, scan the, uh, the arches with the byte open? A lot of the times what we see is customers will digitally open it prior to sending us the case. So they'll open that value inside of the Splint Studio, save that and then send it to us. I hope that, that answers your question on that. And guys, we would love to be a resource. So as you are getting into Splints and you have questions, that's what we're here for. So please reach out. Even if you think it's a silly question, we're here to help. Um, we get asked questions all the time. Um, and so we're happy to help support you in launching this new indication if you haven't launched it yet, or maybe you're just trying to dial in some issues that you've been having, whether it be with um, offset, retention, materials, any of that, we'd love to be a resource for you. Yes, and remember guys, questions? we are on every time zone, so feel free to reach out to us if you're in Europe. We have a European support sitting in your uh, time zone as well. So it's uh, feel free to uh, connect to us. Yeah, and with multiple languages. So Spanish, French, uh, English. Uh, do we have German support, Tarek? I think we do. Yeah, we, Maybe. we have. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for taking time out of your busy day to join us and learn about our splint design. Again, we'd love to offer you a free splint design. I put the link in the chat. Uh, I'll go ahead and post it again. So just reach out. We'll get you that free splint design um, and uh, keep a lookout for our future webinars. I know we've got some exciting ones coming up. So thank you guys. Thanks guys. Thank you guys. Bye. Have a great evening.